Hi, I'm Jean Schumacher, founder of Simply Plant Based, where I have programs to help you to change your health destiny, including the Pregnancy Advantage, where Dr. Deborah Shapiro and I, she's an OBGYN, we help women to get their bodies pregnant ready or help heal your bodies if dealing with infertility issues, as well as the Plant Based Academy, where I provide help, support, guidance, and resources to switch to a plant based lifestyle. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing Professor Spira author of Spiro Speaks Dialogues and the official Mucus Lists Diet Healing System, which are available on Amazon. And you can find him on mucusfreelife.com. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with me here today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, okay. So what made you go plant-based? Share your story. So I, at one point, was 300 pounds. I suffered from a number of different ailments, including chronic migraine headaches every day, constipation issues, really bad allergies where they had had me on pharmaceutical medications for allergies since I was very young. When I was very young, I used to have ear infections all the time and they gave me all kinds of drugs that ruined my messed up my teeth enamel and all kinds of stuff. And I also had a very sick mother when I was young, just growing up. She was in and out of the hospital constantly. So I spent a lot of time as a young person going to hospitals, being at nursing homes and just seeing this environment and feeling at a young age that this was not right. Something was wrong with this kind of environment, that this is not normal for you know, I didn't couldn't explain why I didn't know what was going on. But I was like, man, something's wrong with this. When I got a bit older, my, my mother, she passed away when I was 12. And I lost my grandmother when I was 10. And I had the mother's son bond with my grandmother. And I nobody told me that she was sick or that anything was wrong. So that really devastated me at the age of 10. And two weeks, uh, no, one week after my grandmother passed away, my mother ended up in the hospital for double bypass surgery. She never came back to an apartment. She was in nursing home and hospital for the next two years before she uh, passed away. They amputated both of her legs. Her feet got gangrenous. So I saw that up, clo uh, up close and personal. That was black where the feet start to turn black. So they amputated both her legs. And uh, then, yeah, she lived the next uh, year and a half in, in a nursing facility until she uh, her kidneys started to kind of go out and she just didn't want to deal with the uh, with the dialysis practice. And so she just said, um, that's it. And she she passed away. And uh, so I just at a young age, seeing all of this up close and I was the type of child they say there's usually child that go through some that kind of thing usually either become really bad or like overachievers and i was the overachiever <laughs> because i basically just kind of emotionally kind of just didn't even think about that and really didn't process a lot of those emotions i just focused on achievements and trying to get straight a's and i became the youngest eagle scout in the boy scouts of america uh, and in my, in my tr uh, troop and just uh, th that kind of stuff is varsity football player. And, uh, uh, one of the best musicians, high school musicians in the state of Ohio. And so I just really focused on achievements, but as I did that, I was very sick all the time. So I was running around at school with boxes of tissues and just blowing my nose constantly, I would take Pepto-Bismol almost every day because I had a pretty bad diet. Of I would overeat a lot of bad foods and uh, and take lactate because my I'm not supposed to be eating dairy. But uh, I'd start taking here's a little pill that you can take and then you can you, you can eat it. And so I was uh, was, was sick all the time, but because I was getting all these achievements, I worked out a lot because of being a varsity. Uh, football player. So, you know, then no one was there to say, Hey, you might want to change something. You know, there's, there's another path. So when I uh, got accepted into the college conservatory of music in the university of Cincinnati, I decided I wanted to become a professional musician. And that's when I met Willie smart, AKA brother air who became my friend and mentor. He's who introduced me to 
Professor Arnold Eric's mucusless diet healing system, which I used to call the original plant based diet or the original vegan diet because it was really the, the first large scale, uh, widely known at the time, like widely known healing system to help people transition to what we would call a plant-based or a vegan diet today. I know there's a, it's all kinds of arguments of these terms and the definitions. I try to stay out of, <laughs> out of some of that, where it's just like eating foods that don't leave behind mucus residue in the body because this mucus residue is what leads to disease and de degenerative illnesses and issues in the body. And so that's essentially what I learned when I read this book, I read the book after my friend told me about it and totally changed my life. Within six months, I'd lost a hundred pounds, got off of the pharmaceutical medications, got off of the CPAP unit. They, I was 18 years old. They had diagnosed me with sleep apnea. I had a CPAP unit I was using at night. So I got off of that. And uh, in fact, I don't know if the folks that, that can see it might be able to see this. This is my before and after. These were taken a year apart. So I went from the, the, the big guy to the, the, the skinnier guy. And, uh, and I just felt so much better. It was just like, uh, uh, it really was a rebirth, just like a whole new life. And, um, and I just haven't looked back in 20 years. <laughs> that was 20 years ago. Right. I mean, when you find something that works, it's just like you want to you just want to scream it from the rooftops and just say, you know, yeah, no, for sure. hundred percent. This works. And yep. you just want to scream it. I mean, I, I that's exactly how I feel. You know, I went plant based and and lost over 100 pounds myself and oh, healed my thyroid, which I was told mm -hmm. was impossible. Yes. My husband has reversed multiple sclerosis, you know. Mm. I stopped migraines and just on and on and on the, the things, fatty liver syndrome gone, you yeah. know, just, and it's, you know, when you have that vibrant health, it's just like, ah, yeah, it's good. It's good. So, well, did it take you long to convert? I mean, was it gradual or you were like, today's the day. So I, I'm a huge proponent of transition and transition dieting. There's a whole section in the mucus diet healing system that talks about transition diet. So sometimes people think that with, if they don't really know what we do in the methodologies, they'll think that we're extreme, but then they read the book and they hear us talking. They're like, wait a minute, there's, it's not as extreme as I thought because we we're just strict proponents of using the evolutionary methods to transition so that it's not overnight. But if you transition properly, you can permanently change your physiology so that you can't go back. It's not a question of, oh, man, I'm trying not to eat such and such. It's no, you no longer crave it because those poisons are out of your system. And physically, you would become so sick if you go back to eating those foods that you're not supposed to eat. So for me, it, it happened, it, it, it was somewhat gradual, but I, once I started really applying the system, uh, because that was the game changer, I had wanted to, for the first time in my life, before I started practicing the diet, I wanted to become vegetarian. And that was because I had, I read Paramahansa Yogananda's uh, uh, autobiography of a yogi. And I subscribed to his Kriya yoga, which used to come in the mail back when people got mail, physical mail. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was practicing, uh, trying, trying to read these lessons and trying to learn how to practice this yoga practice. But I noticed that, wait a minute, my, my nose is always stuffed up with just chronic inflammation goop and mucus all up here constantly. So I'm like, I'm not going to be able to practice this unless I deal with that. And it was soon after that, when I kind of had that realization is when I learned about the mucus diet. And that's when I was like, this is what I got to do first. I got to get this together, remove this mucus out of my body. And then I will be able to breathe and practice any breath work tradition that I want. And uh, so that you know, that, that kind of led me 
led led me there. So by the time I had attempted to get off of meat during that period where I was starting the the yoga practice, but uh, but I wasn't doing it right. I was just I was just trying to with willpower. But then a couple of weeks would go by and the weekend would be there. And then I'd be like, I was, I've been pretty good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna chow down. And then I would eat something that I shouldn't have eaten. But uh, once I started using the principles of the mucus diet healing system, it was kind of a straight line where I got, was able to get rid of some of the, the worst offenders soon, it, it, sooner than later. And one of the things you learn how to do is to find food items that are that are not perfect but better than what you might be craving of the things that like okay you definitely want to try to get off of this but then try this because this is better you know it still might be mucus forming that's fine it's good but it's going to be better and so i i practice that in addition to uh there's it's a, a a full system and so that it includes uh fasting but short-term fasting, again, people think that we would promote these real long fasts because a lot of us have done really long fasts, but we don't promote other people to do that. That was something that we did as a result of practicing the methodology in the system. But uh, we got the fasting, we have cleaning, colon irrigation, which sometimes scares people away, but so, well, you know, we clean, clean, clean yourself out, you know, that, that was part of it. And that really helped because that I noticed that when I'd started cleaning myself out, that's when the cravings for meat dissipated because those poisons were no longer in there. And I was getting all of this really, really nasty stuff out of my body. And the more that stuff came out, the better I felt and the less cravings that I had for things I wasn't supposed to eat. So, you know, I, I got to, I would say to be a 100% off of animal products totally was about six months to really to get to that like plant base where it, the, it was really the first two months, but after two months, I was mostly off of it, but I would go back just a little bit here and there with a couple things within those first six months. But after that, and I think at the end of the, that six months, I watched some uh, slaughterhouse videos because I was, it's like that's a methodology that I tell people to use sometimes where because this is the thing that I noticed as I if, if you would have tried to g get me to watch that before I would cleaned myself up, I didn't have that empathy. It wasn't there yet. It was still it was, I was constipated and clogged up and I didn't care and I just didn't care at all. I had went through enough of a transformation, cleaned myself up enough to where the empathy started to grow. So now six months later, I'm watching a slaughterhouse video. Now I'm sitting here crying, saying, I'm never going to eat this again. You know, so it's like a method to, method to the madness there, you know. No, for sure. hundred percent. I mean, I, the only thing I can compare the slaughterhouses is like the concentration camps. I mean, it's just the only thing I can com compare it to. But I have to share one, like when you, when your gut biome heals and you eat something that you shouldn't be eating, oh, share mm. a quick one. I, I ate, I, I was hungry. And when you're hungry, all bets are off. I usually carry mm -hmm. my food, but I was tutoring late into the day. Then I stopped at this bake, you know, I was in a part of town I didn't know. And I stopped at this bakery bagel place. And I said, oh, I'm just going to get a toasted multigrain bagel just to get me home. Because otherwise, you never know what, all bets are off when you're hungry. Right. So I walked in and I ordered the bagel. He goes, hey, we have a new cream cheese. I used to be a cream cheese queen. Mm -hmm. he said, we have a new cream cheese. It's got walnuts and raisins <laughs> and cinnamon and honey. And, and I'm like, oh, and I couldn't even stop. I could not mm. stop myself. And I'm like, you yeah. know, and, and he slathered it on like a half an mm. inch thick on both sides. And I ate that like I was like being released from jail or something, you know. Like, right, I right. <laughs> and so I didn't get 10 minutes down the road. Now, I had to pull off. I couldn't drive. The pain was so excruciating. It was so bad. 
And I just laid down on the front seat of my car, like mm-hmm. pulled off on the side of the road. And it was about 20 minutes later before I could actually sit back up. I mean, I was literally contemplating, like, should I like go to the hospital and have mm-hmm. my stomach pumped? That's how bad. I mean, I never go to the hospital, like unless I'm like, right. OK, it's t- I'm almost dying. It's time to go. OK, right. right. You know, fix me, you know, like, ugh. So I was actually considering to going back and then I just said, I'm going home and it'll pass. And I like crawled up the stairs and curled up on the bed in a fetal mm-hmm. position. And my husband comes home and he goes, what's wrong with you? And I'm mm-hmm. like, hey, cream cheese. Have I had cream cheese again? Nope. I look at it and go, oh, that's the spawn of the devil. Right. No, yep. <laughs> no. Yep. I used to be able to eat a package of cream cheese. Not a problem. No problem yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, no, I use that well. The cream cheese uh, that was one I loved it, and but I would that's when I was into the lactate because I when I was going to high school, when I was driving and driving myself to high school, I would go buy Mark's bagels and get a, a, a for breakfast before I went to school and get like the bagel, and then I always got extra cream cheese, so they would just just put so much on there but it would destroy me if i didn't have that lactate uh to help that lactose go through and um but uh but yeah that's it's definitely uh i, mean, I call that the cla- classical conditioning methodology where there's sometimes we just have to we just have to kind of get hit hit in the gut uh and in, in where we have the relapse see because i'm i tell people not to be hard on themselves understand that that it's an addiction and like any addiction there's it's not going to be always smooth and and you can plan for relapses and uh but as we were saying you if you're plant-based long enough you're cleaning yourself up long enough when you do have that relapse you will never have another one again like that again because you will have an experience that yeah where you're just even- like even plant-based cream cheese, I'm like, no, no. Yeah, I'm, you're I'm even good. like, yep. No, nope, <laughs> nope, I'm good. Right. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, part of this journey is about food. So, like, how did you learn to cook this way? So my friend and mentor that told me about the mucus's diet, uh, brother Air, uh, he's known online or Willie Smart. I. I used to go to his house and he's raising a family on this diet. And, uh, is there's not a whole, cause this is 20 years ago. So before people were talking about plant-based or veganism or anything like that. And so I went over to his house and he showed me how he would prepare food because it it's, we prepare food in a specific kind of way than even other vegans. Like we kind of have, have a, have a pretty, pared down way that we would prepare it. But for me, what was good was I had never really learned how to cook before getting into the diet. So I didn't have a whole lot of bad uh, habits to break, you know, so I wasn't like where I would be this chef and then putting all this salt and butters and all these kinds of things. I didn't have those habits. And so basically, you know, brother, A, you taught me or here like an onion, onion saute. I mean, literally just would show me like, here, here's how you make an onion saute. And here's how you steam vegetables. You can do a the veg- vegetable saute. And, you know, just, I kind of just learned there as well as seeing different recipes that was in the mucus's diet book and uh, just trying things out for myself to say, okay, well, let me see how I can make this or adapt it to how things were, you know, are now, or, you know, was we bake a lot of things like baked, uh, acorn squashes or baked zucchini or baked, uh, when you bake it, you, the, the starchier things, when you bake it, you essentially turn them mucus free, you cook out that starch. And so they become, uh, the, the sticky and gluey properties are cooked out of it. And, uh, so yeah, so that's kind of, and then also I committed to not going to restaurants. So it was, I went about 13 years where I hadn't been to any restaurants at all. It wasn't until finally uh, up here in Columbus, there's a, a good vegan restaurant that has things that I can actually eat. And so I checked that out. And so that's like the one place that I'll, that I'll go. But yeah, for a lot of years, I didn't go to any restaurants. And so I just got in the habit. I'm preparing my food every day. 
you know, I would juice every day, got in the, the daily juicing habit, preparing all my own food. And I just worked that in to the day, just however long it takes. I just don't even think about it. It's just like, prepare it, make my sound. Then, and one thing that I, people I work with, sometimes I tell them to do if they're having trouble, be, you know, they find themselves not being prepared enough uh, uh, later in the day. They'll, I'm hungry, but then I end up going and getting something I'm not supposed to. I'm like, do your food prep first thing in the morning. Like this, if you have to prepare, you get your blenders out and your food processors or whatever, and prepare as much stuff as you need for the rest of the day, get your juices ready. Uh, you can bring them with you to work. And uh, I even got some folks, I have a, I have a van that has a, uh, a, a portable refrigerator that I can plug in. And I tell people, Hey, if you're got the right type of job or you take a lot of trips or that kind of stuff, that's a great investment to have one of those portable refrigerators and you just bring what you need with you wherever you go. And so I got into that habit where I pretty much just, I pr prepare my own food and, and I bring like, there's no excuse if I, I I'm a bring what I need with me. So I'm never, you know, I, I, you know, long, long time ago, I got over any of that because some people get hung up on someone's offering them food. They feel like they like, Oh, they, like they have to maybe accept it or something. It's like, people already know that know me, like, don't offer me any food. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty, I'm going to have my own food that I brought with me. But yeah, no, it was, it was a fun, it was fun learning how to prepare food and know that I'm doing it in a, rational way in a clean way and yeah and I, I and i like being real improvisatory like once i understand how the different the some of the the seasonings work that we use because we don't use salt we'll but we'll use like a lot of onion powder garlic powder and cumin and paprika and that kind of stuff coming up with new recipes and discovering new vegetables to check out and fruit and that kind of which is something that i love about this path because there's such a diversity of fruits and vegetables you <laughs> there's so much out there that uh to, to explore no it's true oh my god and that's one of the standing questions in my house is is this a make again <laughs> you know right yeah like I'll be making something, creating, you know, I'd be like, okay, I got all these things I need to use up. Okay. I'm going to make, I'm going to try this. And then I'm like, honey, is this a make again? <laughs> you know? And then yeah. he gets, uh, he gets annoyed because like, I'll make it one time. And then the next time it's not quite the same. Cause I left out X, Y, Z or whatever. Didn't right. have that. He's like, I need to get you a GoPro and you need to put that on your head when you're cooking. <laughs> so you can get the exact. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, for sure. But it is true. I mean, the variety is just, I eat more variety now and it's endless. It's just endless. I keep coming up with new recipes, new that, you know, just trying all kinds of things to, you know, figure out ways like, you know, circling back to a comment you made, like finding a good alternative to something that you ate, like for example, mac and cheese. Okay. Now I have mac and not cheese. Mm -hmm. so, right you know and it and it's just as satisfying to me you know so it 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 really does and your taste buds change and yeah. your sense yep. of smell changes like for example my son and i used to have knockdown down drag outs over the bacon i mean like literally mm -hmm. like the last piece of bacon now i can't even stand the smell of it you know right. and and years ago i would actually cook my dog's food and I would use a little bit of chicken for like six, I'd make six months of at a time, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so I would just use a couple packages of chicken, mostly for flavoring. And I didn't want it in the house cooking because it smelled so bad to me. Yeah. And so like, I would stick it outside <laughs> in a crock pot and let it cook. Yeah, right? let it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was like 17 degrees outside. So like, you know, I'm like, okay, it's not going to cook outside. Right. So I put it in the garage. And my husband goes out there. He didn't know I'd put the crock pot out there. And he goes, oh, my God, I think the septic backed up into the garage. Like, <laughs> that's funny. I'm like, no, that's just the chicken it's cooking. It's just chicken cooking. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's how bad it smells to us now. Yeah. You know, and I grew up eating, you know, typical diet, you know, right. meat. We had our own garden and we ate mostly out of that garden. But we had, you know, meat and then, you know, a salad and two vegetables every night. So I'm grateful for that. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, then I learned about candy and <laughs> good processed yeah. foods and that was mm-hmm. it. So, yeah. So what changes have you seen in your life? This is just a total, total transformation. I mean, one thing that my friend had told me when he was talking about getting into this lifestyle I was wanting to be an artist and pursuing being a professional musician and just really wanting to just really immersing myself as an artist. And he said that the instrument is not my trombone or the piano or the drums. The instrument is this is the body. So doesn't it make sense? You spend nine, 10, 11 hours practicing your instrument every day to try to gain mastery. But then you trash your body. That doesn't make any sense. And he, and just him explaining that, I was like, yeah, that does like, what would happen if I put effort into cleaning this up? How would that affect my art? How would that affect my, uh, my music? And it just totally opened me up and transformed my, uh, just my ears, my approach to music you know, I was getting good training and putting myself in positions to, to be trained well, but it just creatively just totally opened me up a whole different way. My studies, uh, I'd always wanted to be the type of person that would research and read a lot of books and just be real, just smart. But it used to be hard for me to sit down and do a lot of reading. And, but after practicing the diet, then and I did I did study different I, I used to study a lot of of uh, just studying techniques and speed reading and all these kinds of things and a lot of those things they didn't really work until after I started doing the diet and practice and cleaning myself up and then I went back to like there's something called photo reading and some of these other techniques and it was like oh wow you know, this, this, now this stuff works. And so I attribute the master's degrees that I went on to get in, in my PhD to practicing the diet. Cause I originally didn't have that plan to stay in academia and higher education and that kind of stuff. I wanted to get my degree and go and be a professional musician in New York or something, but practicing the diet made me one not not really want that kind of rambunctious lifestyle to just settle down so the that draw to go to someplace like New York was no longer there is I really just wanted to focus on my transition and focus on trying to perfect my my body as 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 an art form where I talk about fasting and mucus's diet practicing that as an art form like it like an artist and so that uh, that really changed. And then the, the academia just essentially became like a safe haven where it's like, okay, here's an environment where uh, I, I love studying and this is what I want to be doing so I can study. Uh, I really use the resources as much as I could with all the interlibrary loan system. And I was getting all these old books being, being mailed from across the seas and uh, in foreign countries and stuff and just really uh, doing a lot of deep dives. And, um, and I definitely don't think I wouldn't have chose that path and wouldn't have been able to do that in the kind of studying and the kind of reading and uh, writing and analysis and everything that I had to do to get those degrees. I, I wouldn't have been able to do that before uh, that transformation. And, um, but it was just everything, all, everything changed. Just my, my value system the way that I saw the world, the way that I felt internally, uh, it just, yeah, it's just a real, uh, and, and most people that would saw me, they would say, yeah, you're like a different person. Cause not only I look totally different, but, uh, you know, I felt different inside, you know, it brought something. So I look at it like it brought the real me out because that was being suppressed by the, the bad eating and certain orientation. Cause I, as I did work a lot on trying to uh, uh, walk back all of the bad conditioning from, <laughs> from uh, and brainwashing as I was growing up. And so um, 
So yeah, so a lot of that to- totally changed. It's true. You do go through these amazing lifestyle changes and I've seen it on so many levels. You know, I've been in, in the classroom for over 35 years and, and the kids that I would get to be able to go to transition to plant-based living, mm. like, you know, from things like acne clearing up to their brains, being able to function, getting off medications like for ADD or ADHD, right. And, right. you know, just they, they cleaned up their bodies and like allergies. Oh my God. Someone, one, one of my students had so many allergies, like she literally could only eat a handful of things without mm. having an allergic reaction. And once she went plant-based and calmed all the inflammation down, then she was able to, I think she has one nut allergy and that's it. Mm. And then she can eat pretty much, you know, anything plant-based, but it, you know, it's, it's such a huge difference when you, when you see that. Well, what was the most difficult obstacle that you faced going plant-based? That's a, that's a good question because I, cause my mentality was once I was so committed to it when I got it and I just dove so deep into it, I was kind of like, you know, this, this path or bust, you know, so I didn't even really think like that in terms of, you know, just obstacle, the, the typical obstacle or one of the biggest obstacles for a lot of people is the social dynamic. Uh, as there's a lot of people that, s- that just really don't know how to deal with that. They'll say, yeah, they are eating better. They're feeling good. But then they get that phone call from, from a friend or somebody or a family member that's like, Hey, you want to go out to eat or go to this bar or go this club or something like that. And they don't have the strength to say no. And so they go and they think that they're going to be able to bring their food and be good. But then before you know it, they are relapsing because it's the environment. The environment is a trigger and and it's over. So I before that became a problem, I had just committed so much to this path that I just was like, that is not going to be a downfall for me. You know, I'm just going to not worry about what other people think about me, not try to fit in. So some people probably thought I was antisocial or whatever. I just didn't care at that point. And uh, as a lot of my social interaction just became as a musician. And I was still going out places because I was trying to learn how to play music. So I was playing in a lot of clubs and stuff. But, uh, you know, that that was a challenge. There's definitely I mean, there's a lot of challenges on on the path. Just once you <laughs> once you get on on the path, particularly Mugus' diet healing system path is uh there's a, a lot of a lot of things come up because you're putting your body in a position where it can what's what eric calls the latent diseases or latent illnesses or things that are inside you waiting for the opportunity to eliminate but they can't do that until you start to clean yourself out and you fast and that kind of stuff so these latent illnesses most a lot of people have them their whole life and then they come to the surface when they're a lot older, but their body is too weakened to be able to deal with it. And it ends up being a fatal illness. Whereas if you go through the proper cleansing processes when you're younger, you can actually eliminate that stuff to the point where you don't have to worry about that later. Like that's not going to be the thing that's going to going to take you out. And so uh, so there there was definitely an adjustment there. I had to kind of embrace and learn the difference between uh because the this this idea of being sick that changed instead of thinking about those symptoms as sick that we look at it as an elimination because you're permanently eliminating this stuff that's finite because you get to the point where eventually you don't have those eliminations like that anymore so I early on, I went through pretty massive eliminations. I'm blowing out, getting rid of all this mucus, all this stuff is coming out, just huge detoxes. And and I had to make time for that. You know, I had to really not expect to be up and about and running because what society demands and teaches most people is to if, if you get a little sick, or you're not feeling good, that's that's no excuse not to go into work that day or to not to do something, go take some, some NyQuil or Tylenol or whatever, take a pill, and then get back in there, get back to work instead of lay down, maybe do an enema, fast, 
and and let your body go through the cleansing process. It's it's a privilege to be able to have a a fever. Is not is not everybody's endocrine system is good enough to even give them a, a good fever. You want if if your if your body has decided to help you eliminate using that tool, then that's a good thing. You know, you know, in a lot of cases, we know most people don't, they don't understand what it is. They don't think about it like that. So they take suppressants, which ultimately it suppresses the symptoms. And then the illness becomes chronic down the road because you didn't give the body a chance to actually do what it wanted to do to eliminate this stuff. So, uh, so that was an adjustment early on just, but I guess I was so sick for so long. I was just like, it can't be worse than what I've already already been through. So I just kept on, uh, when when those times would come, I I didn't hesitate to, to fast and to do what I needed to do to go through that, which really helped me a lot in the long run. Uh, cause I, I just wasn't scared of it. And I've, and I have seen people be scared of that. And, uh, but yeah, to me, I'd rather, (laughs) you know, I'd rather, uh, uh, you know, rather be, be clean and just stay on the path. And if I have to take some days off, I take some days off. It's true. Your body needs that time to heal. And fasting is one of the best ways to actually help heal your body. And it's, it's absolutely amazing because that's what animals do in the wild. Mm -hmm. They'll just crawl into a cave and they'll drink water and then just lay there until their body heals. And we should be doing that too, you know, and a fever, you know, is, is a way of raising your body temperature to kill the bacteria and, and things that are in there. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, it takes some ibuprofen or some Motrin. Got to bring that fever down. I mean, yes. If it's like 105, you know, okay. Yes. We're going over the top, you know, but, and and that's not, and and that generally won't happen if you're eating what you should be eating before and after that, that 105 is like very rare. Right. Get right. It up there. I mean, okay. I get that, but allow your body to heal itself. Yeah. That's yeah. what a fever is. It's one of the tools of your body to do that. So, well, walk us through what a, what a day of food is like for you. So, uh, yeah. So this, this is always an interesting question because it's not the same 20 years in because of the transitionary nature of the system what I eat to like my normal day today is not my normal day 20 years ago. And I actually have a, I have a three hour long video that I'd say, what do I eat in a day? But I broke it down into different year segments. So I was like, this is what a typical day would look like years one through three years, four through nine, so on and so forth. But in terms of right now, just to give you this, what I'm eating right now. So I generally uh, uh, stick to what, Eric calls the no breakfast plan in the book. So I very rarely will I eat something in the first like four to six hours and I'm up. Uh, And sometimes I don't drink anything either. Like today I didn't drink, I didn't drink anything. And for for six or seven hours, and I didn't even mean to, it was just kind of the way the day went, but I'm able to do that because of the years of, you know, it's like, it's not the end of the world. If I, you know, if I, if I don't stick to this, some strict schedule, but, uh, I, what I like to do right now is I like to get up and I'll be up for a couple hours, do a green juice at at different times. That would have been a a fruit juice, but right now I'm kind of doing a green juice, uh, which is like cucumber and celery and some greens in there, maybe like one apple. So I'll juice that and, uh, and drink that down. Then, a couple hours later, I'll have a, a mono fruit meal. And it's, uh, that's another thing that's talked about in the mucus diet book as the, you have like w- one, one type of fruit that is in season is optimal. And that's not something that I, that I expect people to do right away or that anything like that. Cause uh, years ago, I, that would have been a cooked fruit meal that would have been baked banana or baked apple or stewed apples or something like that. But, uh, but now, you know, I just have generally one, one type of fruit in the afternoon. And then in the evening, a big combination salad, maybe some baked mucus free vegetables or some steamed uh, collard greens or kale or something like that. And, 
And that's and that's kind of a general sort of a, a general day uh, it, uh, now. Yeah, not not too exciting, <laughs> but it's like that's, you know, but that's uh, that's that's kind of where where I'm at. But it took a long time to get get to that, to that, that type of refinement. I definitely ate a lot more year, you know, years ago. I would have what I call Eric's two course meal where you have fruit and vegetables in the same meal but you don't he, he's very adamant about not mixing fruits and vegetables at the same time in the same meal so you would eat your fruit course wait 15 minutes and then have your combination salad and your cooked vegetables and if you're craving some mucus maybe some kind of uh well toasted grain bread uh, or something like that you could and, and then i had found things like uh Tort, uh, toasted tortillas and things like that that would kind of if you wanted that crunch or craving some uh some mucus kind of stuff like that you know years ago i used to use there was a number of mucus forming foods that i used for my transition over the years things like beans or things like different different things that i don't eat now but that it really helped me out years ago um now one thing that has been a more recent discovery over the past couple of years was uh was jackfruit and and doing right. like bait yeah baked jackfruit <laughs> doing doing stuff with the jackfruit is uh been really been, a, been really good because that it eliminates really well but it can uh, taste really good and and be pretty substantial and uh so yeah i like that one yeah, that's like barbecue right there. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot you can do with it. Yes, there is. Lots of good things. Well, what are some of your, apart from jackfruit, we got that one. Okay, what mm -hmm. are some of your favorite dishes? So I always like to tell people about baked banana surprise. And that is baked bananas, uh, applesauce, and chopped dates. And that combination is... Mm, yeah, I, I so love, take, I love okay, that. So you take a banana. Yeah, I'm assuming you peel it. Just well, not well, no, yeah. Don't don't peel it yet. So so what I what you do? So you take uh, however many bananas you want to do. Two to three okay. is is usually good. So you just cut the cut the nipples off of both sides. Cut the stem off and the nipple just just a little bit. Then uh, put it on a baking pan. I do it for four twenty five uh and bake it for any it depends on how ripe it already is but you bake it anywhere from 15 minutes to 20 minutes is usually going to be enough time you want to bake it long enough to where it starts to to uh, to secrete juice from the two sides it'll turn black like the uh uh, uh the, the skin turns black and you can turn it halfway through uh, but it should be pretty brown or black. Just the the skin be dripping where you can hear the uh, the, the banana juice kind of sizzling as it hits the the hot pan. And uh, so yes, yeah, so you take and you take that out and just kind of slit. And then you can kind of bring it over to the bowl. And there takes a little technique to sort of get the the juice and the and the banana innards in into the bowl. And, uh, and it's just, it's really soft. It's ju like juicy. It got that. It's yeah, it's just a good, uh, a good thing. Then you can either have like a store-bought natural uh, uh, applesauce, or you can make your own applesauce. And so what the last time I made this, I, uh, I baked some apples. It takes a little longer to, to bake the apples, but I just cut the apples up and take the seeds out of it and put that on the baking sheet, put a little cinnamon over top, maybe a little nutmeg since it's October, and uh, then bake that uh, uh, until that's kind of nice and uh, easy to stick the fork through it. And uh, what I did was, so I, I took half of the the baked apples and, and put it as part of just right next to the baked uh, banana. And then I took the other half and I used... Um, like a small blender to make uh, uh to just make apple turn it into applesauce and uh, then i use that as the applesauce chop up some dates and put that all together and that's that yeah i just <laughs> it's just excellent is and for anybody that's craving 
sweet it has a sweet tooth that's craving pies or cakes or that kind of stuff like this is definitely the kind of recipe that can really help you uh move forward <laughs> from those kind of cravings right because anything with dates on it mm, 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 mm. Yeah. yeah and it, it eliminates so well I, you know this is this is a recipe I've worked over the years, I've worked with a lot of people that had tried to be raw foodist, but then they would hit a ceiling and they would have kind of be having problems. And then I would try to rein them in and be like, well, I'm, I'm glad that you're wanting to do that, but not all cooked food is created equal. And if you cooked mucus free foods and the right combinations can really help you because a lot of times they, they won't be digesting food very well and the uh the people that i worked with and they weren't having natural bowel movements with their enough frequency and so i get them on something like the baked banana surprise and i'll get a phone call <laughs> they, they're like well i haven't had a bowel movement like this in years this is great you know and that kind of thing and so <laughs> you know, it's, it's that's the a, fiber the fiber yeah it's it's just it's a it's it's a good you know because because then you can start to very ver i'm real into variation and you were, you have your core things, but then you can just endlessly vary them. So you can trade out the dates for prunes. You know, I did that and I used to, I'd recommend that to some people. You can put the prunes, of course, obviously you can do raisins, but uh, you know, prunes, prunes in that combination is good, especially if you are having trouble with, with your eliminations. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why I'm I'm thinking about cherries, like bake bake cherries on top of that. <laughs> oh, it would, would actually be really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is is that's because that's a really big concern when I hear that people aren't having natural bowel movements every day, and people's like, yeah, every I'm have a bowel movement every couple of days. It's like, what are you what? <laughs> that's not good. You don't want to, <laughs> you know, we need to be getting this stuff out because the average person has 32 feet of impacted intestines and any 15 to 20 pounds of uneliminated fecal matter that's just sitting there and wondering why they don't feel good because they just get backed up with all this waste. And uh, so, yeah, so this way of way of life helps deal with that so that you can be a lot more regular. 100 <laughs> percent there's nothing like a plant-based dump there's just yeah. no other way to say it yeah i mean and frequently several times a day like yes. the fiber flows you know yes. yep so yeah oh and when in the in the more mucus free it is it's not sticky you know it's not leaving behind this slimy residue which is the the slimy residue that it's like if you're wiping and there's a slimy residue, you can imagine, well, that slimy residue is in the colon. It's further up. And over time, that stuff starts to build up. If you if you're if you don't cleanse or you don't give your body a chance to actually clean that stuff out, it starts to just collect and it gets acidic and then it starts damaging the lining of the colon and so yeah. on and so forth. And then it's systemic after that. It's true. Well, what are you most proud of? Sounds like you have a lot to choose from. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good question. Uh, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm proud of just uh, just just life in general. Just just trying to uh, set in art these goals that we have and uh, and really do it because when we started. Uh, being more public with what we do and the lifestyle and transition, you know, we knew we would get pushed back from different places and people. And, uh, but I just started to have this thing deep down that was like, you know what, pe people need to hear this message. And I, it was, it was one of those things where I look around and it's like, there's nobody else that's talking about transition the way we do. There's nobody that's really, promoting there's a lot of people that promote raw foodism and a lot of people that's talking you know they have their vegan channels and that kind of stuff but there wasn't a lot of people that i call the mucus's diet healing system the middle way like the plant-based middle way where it's not as extreme as people think it is but then it's it's more 
a little more intensive than some people think it's, it's right, it's right down the middle. And so I'm, I'm proud of, of uh, trying to bring this information to the public dealing with censorship. I got the past couple of years, they, a, as my community started to grow, uh, cause I really didn't, ch- I've been saying the same stuff for years on the videos, but all of a sudden I have a few more followers and, Oh, we don't, we don't know if we like what he's saying. And so I got hit with like the YouTube strikes and they took down a bunch of my videos and I had to take down like 25 of them. And, uh, and it's sad because it's okay. You're going to go after me. I'm talking about eating fruits and vegetables and maybe, well, I said something that you didn't approve of about, uh, about forced medical procedures. Like, okay. And uh, yeah, because it's one of the things I really, really dislike is censorship. I just, I just, I, I were even if somebody wants to say it's, it's one, it's like the furthest I go is like, okay, if you're threatening somebody's life, that's a problem. But outside of that, it's like somebody wants to use their voice to t- tell me how much they hate me. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't appreciate it, but it is what it is. Like, I'm not going to try to do something to get you banned so that you can't speak your mind and um and and there really came down on a lot of us on these platforms instagram and facebook and in these places where we've been able to generate these grassroots followings and be under kind of under the radar but yeah they <laughs> they came the past couple of years and they've been coming after us but, but you know but i'm i'm proud of weathering that storm just you know, pushing forward and just trying to do some of the things that we have planned for the future, trying to, we want to build a mucus free village and community called the the Arnold Eret village and just like-minded people that practice the diet and, and want to live uh, this kind of life and, uh, and, and to create something that we can then share with the world to show like a model say like, Hey, this, this can be done. And there's a few communities like that. That's that you can find out there, but none that specifically are around the mucus diet healing system. But, uh, you need but that yeah, support. you need that support. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a and, community, whether it's virtual or, you know, mm-hmm. your neighbor, the hood, you know, whatever it right. is, you need that community where you're working, you're all on the same page. So yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yep. And that was a big, inspiration for why I started doing what I was doing because no one was talking about the mucus diet years, it was years ago. And, and I just started just putting the information out there and just didn't, wasn't a lot of people that heard it, but all uh, slowly people started saying, Oh, he would kind of notice us. And, to, and, and once they read the book, then that was usually the game changer is they read the book. And then it's like, Oh, you know, so you're either, gonna hate it or you're gonna love it (laughs) is there's usually doesn't leave a lot of gray gray room for people usually and so and most people love it you know they read it they're like man that was that was brilliant i didn't think about it like that i didn't think about the body and disease and overcoming disease and illness and that what i'm eating is doing having this kind of devastating effect and um so that's just been a mission of mine is to bring awareness to, uh, to this lifestyle. And, uh, I just, I want to expose everybody to it. I, I don't put it on me to get like, everybody needs to do it. It's like, no, I just want everybody to at, at some point in their life, this information came in their direction where they could decide, uh, they at least had a decision. They could decide, Oh, let me investigate this and see what this is, or just kind of brush it off and and move on. And then, you know, years later and going through all kinds of health issues, then, you know, maybe they'll think about it. (laughs) You know, maybe they'll be like, what was that thing that somebody, that that guy that had a YouTube channel, he was talking about something. Let me, let me see if I can remember what that was. Cause you have to be ready for it. You have to be ready to make changes. And if you're not ready, it's just going to go in one ear, not the other. So well, yeah. what are three things someone can do to help start this journey? So first and foremost, I tell people you got to get the mucus diet healing system book 
And, you know, we put out the annotated, revised and edited edition. But I tell people, get any version. If you don't like me, fine. Go get there. There is really no original version. People say that they're like, well, I got the original one. Well, not really, because it had been changed over the years. I think I have the oldest version in existence, which was the 1920. Uh, I got a 1924 second edition, and I've never seen a copy uh, older than that one. But uh, but this, this is what ours look like, the annotated Nugus's Diet Healing System. But I always tell people, like, this is the, f- the first step is, is to read the book and to do so with an open mind because it will challenge. It's very – it's not what a lot of people expect because it's the, the nutritional theories. It cha- challenges a lot of the standard nutritional theories and concepts. And, uh, and I always tell people don't – to because it's in that tradition of, of a book where there's – there's practical information and methodologies that you can apply regardless of your belief system. And then there are some philosophical ideals and ideals about humanity and where we came from and stuff that is controversial that it, that would kind of strike people like, wait a minute. So I tell people have an open mind, check it out because there are a lot of those, some of those philosophies I didn't believe until I'd actually practiced the system for a while. And then I re- reread the book and I'd be like, huh, I see what he's talking about now. So it's one of those where you, you do to, to really get the, the full understanding, you do have to, to dive in. But yeah, so first step, read the book. Second step is use the book to then create a, uh, uh, a shopping list. And check out some of those menus and the menu plan and those recommendations. And now you'll better understand why you're avoiding certain foods. And uh, but a, give yourself the latitude to transition. So you create that uh, a good list, and then go to the store and start stocking up, stocking up on on the on better foods. And uh, and for the folks that are pretty strong, eventually, maybe not right away. But uh, so you can either do this one of two ways. You can start throwing away the old food slowly over time, or you can just have a big purge and just get rid of everything <laughs> out of your kitchen. Just one, you know what? I'm, this is a rebirth. I'm starting over again. Get rid of all that old stuff. Whatever's in there is probably not good. Uh, and then just start over again with getting better versions of, of everything. And um you know, and then you are starting to clean yourself out. I mean, that can be, that's helpful advice for a lot of people to uh, investigate the, the enemas. We do le- lemon juice and distilled water enemas is the thing that we, we talk about, but, um, but yeah, those are the principles, you know, Nate, Nate, real naturopathy uh, yeah. to, to really, to use the food, explore the food, explore the fasting. Uh, you know, I love herbology and the herb, but I, I, I think that it's, the way that people, a lot of people talk about it, it's misused. A lot of people, they go from essentially take their orientation toward medicine and then put it over on herbs and expect herbs to do everything where it's like, no, focus on your food first. There's so much that you can do with food and the fasting. And then there are certain things later on that the herbs can be very helpful for certain folks. When you're talking to, uh, endocrine system you're talking about your thyroid and uh and and the adrenal formulas and that kind of stuff that can be very very beneficial but first and foremost you want to get your get your diet you know on on the right page well thank you so much for sharing your insights and your knowledge thank you yeah thank you so much for having me enjoyed it